my kid Greenberry again, and I'm going to be going over team development and overall how to start a business with the right people and how to motivate them every single day. Okay, so the first way to really develop your team is by um, creating a relationship with your team members. So the first one, um, the first thing I focus on is really one-on-ones. So one-on-ones is a time that you can hang out with each person on your team individually. This could be morning coffee, breakfast, um, lunch break, dinner. It could be a happy hour. Just make sure you don't get drunk. Um, it could be a dinner. It could be just hanging out, maybe going to watch a game. It could be um, just overall anything that you can do outside of the actual office, right? This is a way for you to build a relationship more individually with your team members one-on-one. -on -one. Um, anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes is all that you need at least once a week with each person. The next thing that I um, implement in my office just to build a stronger relationship with my guys is I implement nightly breakdown meetings. So in a relationship, before you go to sleep at night with your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, or wife, right? Um, before you go to sleep, you always typically ask, so how was your day today? And the, way, the reason why you do this is so that way that your loved one won't wake up the next day feeling that same energy that they went before they go to sleep, right? So it's the same concept, same philosophy, philosophy behind it. Um, I want to know every aspect of my employees' days before they go into the next day. So that means I want to know their positives. I want to know their negatives of the day. And ultimately, I want to know their game plan in order to conquer the next day. That way they can leave the workplace feeling on a, a high on a positive note and they can walk in tomorrow feeling way more confident, ready to take on the day. Okay? So a nightly breakdown, it could be a call. If they can't answer the phone, it could just be a text message or email. Just make sure it happens every single day. The next way to build a relationship is team nights. So I love team nights. My whole office is what we look forward to every two weeks. We have a team night where a way we can build camaraderie with each other um, for people um, to build relationships with each other as well, employees. And it's a way for you to bring your family members, your loved ones as well, so that way we can all get to know each other on a, um, a deeper surface level. So team nights can be meeting at putt putt at top golf it could be i have barbecues cookouts crawfish boils um team nights can be anything from just a game night a birthday party just a fun environment make sure you try to keep it as pg and pg-13 as possible um don't you know go out and ball out like i was saying earlier and buy everyone shots and all of that try to keep it pg it's just really meant to just build that relationship with each other another way to build a relationship with your team is really knowing their step seven that's lingo that we use in my office, but a step seven is knowing what their ultimate goal is, what drives them. So everyone is either money motivated, they're either fame and recognition motivated, they're either family motivated, um, freedom motivated, structure motivated, or just results motivated. So figuring out each person and what really drives them will help cater how you can properly manage them as well and build that relationship. And then the most important aspect is just knowing about their personal life. Are they married? Do they have kids? Do they have siblings? Um, what's their background story? What's their culture? This will help you learn a deeper, um, a deeper way of knowing about them. Um, that way you can really adjust and impact them on a stronger level. Um, and then also allow yourself to explain a little bit about your personal life as well. Now, make sure you keep your personal life very surface level because you don't want to go into depth about all of your negatives. But you want to make sure that, you know, they open the doors as well. So that way, if you're talking about your personal life, then they will as well. And they'll feel more open and confident with you. Okay. Now, next, we're going to move into motivating your team. So how to get them jacked up every single day. So how to do that is you have to be the one to bring in all the hype and the energy every single day when you walk into the office. You have to create this upbeat, positive tone no matter what day, of the, what day of the week it is, no matter what time of the day it is. When you walk in, you want to create that energy for your team. Okay? So you can start off your morning meeting or your morning phone, phone call um, by going over all the company positives. So don't start off by the negatives. It's very easy to do that. Well, this is what we did yesterday. We need to fix this. Start off on the positives. I either like to do a morning chant. Um, I'll give a shout out to a certain individual that did really good the day before. Um, or you can do a break the ice exercise as well. Also, in your meetings, you want to allow people to speak up and voice their opinion freely. Now, it is a startup company. 
And obviously you need your team to help you get to the next level. So your team needs to be involved when it comes to making decisions. Now, ultimate decisions, I understand the management team focusing on that. But when it comes to meetings, you want to make sure that your team um, feels confident and comfortable enough to voice their opinion and contribute and add value in any way that they can. You don't want to make sure you showcase your personal negatives whenever you are running an office. Um, and personal negatives is like complaining about certain things, um, making excuses, showcasing that you're tired, you have bags in your eyes, um, getting easily upset and frustrated when something doesn't work right, constantly being late. Because the moment that you do that, the moment that your team starts to follow all of those habits and will start this ongoing train, right? So in order for them to not make excuses, you can't make excuses as well. What I like to do is I like to find an employee um, that showcase or, or implementing a work habit or work um, ethic that I really, really like and I want that to contribute to other people. And I'll give them a shout out or I'll use them as an example in my meetings. So for instance, shout out to Sarah Beth yesterday. She was doing so great. Um, she managed doing X, Y, Z. So everyone, if you need help on doing that, then reach out to Sarah Beth. One, that gives Sarah Beth all the confidence in the world. And then two, um, that shows the other people on your team what they need to do to get that recognition like Sarah Beth just got. And the last thing that I do to really motivate my team is I like to create monthly challenges or weekly challenges. Um, it could be anything from by the end of the week, let's see who gets the first person to do X, Y, Z. And the first person to do that, they'll either get um, like a gift card or they'll get a website shout out on the website or a company or a um, shout out on the, the sorry, or a spotlight in the office or maybe like a cheesy medal award or something along those lines. Now, once again, you are a startup company, so you don't want to ball out again on these team nights and on these company prizes. But just think of something creative where it's minimal when it comes to spending, spending on it. Um, but it's something that creates people a lot of excitement and gets them hype every single day. So when do you motivate your team? Every single day. Every single day, you need to be that driving positive force no matter what is going on in your business. A way to gauge this is if sales or business is low or slow, then you want to focus more talking about opportunities. You want to talk about more goals for the company. You want to talk about more of a structure, something to keep... Um, get them back in line. Um, you want to have more one-on-one -on -one time. So going back to spending time, personal time with each individual to find, figure out their goals and their growth plan. Okay? Now, if sales are high, business is booming, things are fast paced, then that's when you really want to like jump the gun and you want to push them, you want to challenge them, you want to get them riled up and excited and get them hyped every single day. It's very easy that once you start seeing results happening to take your foot off the gas. So you don't want that to happen with any of your employees. The better they're doing, the more you want to push them. Yeah. Now, the overall goal with motivating your team is you want your team to look up to you. You want them to aspire to be in your role. Have you ever had a boss in the past that you looked at them and you were like, ooh, like I don't want to do what you want to do? Because maybe they're presenting themselves in a very just unattractive way. You want your team to look up to you. You also want to make sure that you're not a dictator, you're not a tyrant, you're not coming in you know, throwing chairs around the wall. You want to make sure that you are coming and being respectful, listening, understanding, and always staying cool, calm, and collected. That's a true aspect of leadership. Now, the last aspect I want to go over is having those tough and critical conversations. So it's really easy for us to have a lot of fun, motivate individuals every single day, but sometimes we'll have those, have to have those tough conversations to make sure that we are in order and staying, keeping everyone in line, okay? So having these tough conversations, number one rule for it is never have these conversations in front of anyone. If it's a tough conversation, always make sure you pull that person aside and have a tough conversation in private. You think about it this way. You always want to build in front of everyone and break in front of no one. Okay? Um, this way they'll respect you a lot more and you'll, you'll create a more productive workplace and they won't be scared of you as well. So there's two different ways of having conversations. Um, the first way is a build, break, build combo. Okay, a build, break, build combo is a quick job, just goes straight to the point, it's very genuine, but you're still able to get the point across. Now an example of a build, break, build combo would be, hey John, um, I love how you started the intro to the website. The only thing I would change is just changing the font and the alignment to make sure it matches up to the theme, but overall, great start to the project. So you saw how I built them up, I broke them in the middle and then I built them right back up. That way they leave the conversation still feeling confident in their skill set, but they still know what they got to fix and it was very direct on what they need to work on. Okay? Now, those are quick to the easy conversations. 
but we all have those serious conversations that we need to have as well. Maybe it's being late. Maybe it's someone that's constantly tired. Maybe it's someone that's constantly making excuses. Maybe it's someone who calls out all the time. So those conversations, you want to follow a different structure. Okay. Now that structure is called a level one, level two, and level three structure combo. Now there's a structure, there's a way, a format in order to have each of these three combos. It always starts with understanding is the first one. The second one is explaining. The third is a goal. And the fourth is a game plan. So I'm going to show you an example of what that means. So level one conversation. Okay. With the level one conversation, you want to, it's my fault. So you want to put the blame back on yourself. Okay. So that's like the theme of the conversation. So how an example of the level one conversation would go would be, so, hey, John, it's totally my fault. I probably didn't explain it well enough. But the reason why we don't want to have three hour long lunch breaks is because X, Y, Z. Now, I know that your goal is to accomplish a project by the end of the week, but right now we're not on track to get there. So what do you think that we can do to make sure that we get the goal or the project accomplished by the end of the week? Right. So I put the blame back on myself just to kind of break the ice. But also I made sure that they answered as well by saying, what do you think that we can do to make sure that we get the goal accomplished by the end of the week? So that way they can answer and they can tell me their game plan directly. Okay. Now let's say it's the next day and John comes in tomorrow and he takes another three hour lunch break. So the theme of the level two conversation is I'm confused. Okay. So you want to make sure you change your facial expressions on that part too. So how the conversation goes is, Hey, John, so I'm kind of confused. I thought we talked about this yesterday. But once again, the reason why we don't want to have three hour long conversation, three hour long lunch breaks is because of X, Y, Z. Now, are you OK? Did I not explain it well enough? Do you get it? OK, because once again, we're still one day behind on hitting our goals for the end of the week. So what do you think that we can do again to make sure that we follow up to make sure that we are coming through for Friday for the Friday results? Right. And like, OK, good. Well, let's make sure that we don't have this conversation again. Now, let's say it's Wednesday and John comes in again and he takes another three hour long lunch break. Now, this third conversation, level three, now the tone is more so I'm concerned. Right. So it's, hey, John, I'm concerned because this is the third time we talked about taking three hour long lunch breaks. At this point, we're definitely not going to hit the goal that we need to at the end of the week by Friday to accomplish our goals, which now can result in us potentially losing the client. So at this rate, I think that maybe we should go ahead and sit down in our office and figure out if this is the right fit for you or not, or how we can make sure that this ultimately never happens again, right? So the first one, just to reiterate, it's, hey, it's my fault. I probably didn't explain it. The second one is kind of confused. I thought we talked about this yesterday. And the third is, hey, I'm concerned. This for sure is the third time we talked about this, okay? Now, you want to make sure that you follow this structure for every single conversation you have. Now, if you're talking about the three-hour long lunch break, and then you're on level two with that, but then someone comes in late tomorrow, the same person, and it's a late conversation, then you want to start back at level one for the late conversation. This is a way to keep it flowing in a structure so that way your, your employees aren't confused, you know, if you have to let them go or if you have that tough conversation. So they're not having resentment towards you because they understand that you explain it three different times in three different ways for them to get it, right? So... Those conversations are always a little bit harder to have, but if you follow the structure, it makes it a lot easier. At the end of the day, you need to have those conversations because you can't let people walk all over you in your business. It's a new business. You want to make sure you're starting off on the right foot with the right people. Um, and if those aren't lining up with their goals and your goals, then you will have to probably shake hand and part ways at the end of the day, right? But if you have these conversations, hopefully it will allow them to button up and tighten back in the shape where you won't have to, to result in that departure. Awesome. Well, other than that, you guys, that's all I have for you. Um, I hope you learned a lot from this series. So if you have any questions, um, then you can also get my information um, at the bottom of the page and go from there. Give me a call anytime. Thank you.